Ty Bartell with another edition of Player Profile. This time we're back in our friends over on the east part of Akron with the Archbishop Hoban Knights. One of their seniors, Devin Harris, joins me today. Devin, how are we doing today? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm not doing too bad, and you ladies aren't doing too bad. Another season of winning basketball at Archbishop Hoban High School. But before we talk about that this season, too, and kind of like where we are right now, I want to go back to kind of the early years of basketball for Devin Harris. What are some of the earliest memories you have in the sport? When do you remember getting involved in the sport of basketball? Mm, it's been a, quite a long time. I was about seven, eight years. So my brother initially played and I wanted to be like him, my older brother. So that's what got me started playing basketball. And when you have when you have an older brother in the house, too, and you talk about learning basketball, I'm sure there was uh, there was plenty of uh, bumps, bruises along the way in learning, too. Was he the was he the coddling type or was he the uh, the I'm going to smack it right back down in your face type learn to shoot? Yeah, he was ruthless, you know. <laughs> there was no mercy. You, you talk about that, too. How did that help shape you as a basketball player, having that kind of, I have to be tough to be able to score against my brother? How did that translate to you once you finally did start getting into games, too, and start really finding yourself on the floor? It helped me because I realized, like, even if my brother was ruthless to me on the court, at the end of the day, we were still family. So what happens on the court stays on the court. So it helped me realize not to take everything personal and just leave it all on the court. When you started your journey in basketball, too, I mean, a lot of a lot of girls, a lot of guys, too, in, in the early years, they, they try different sports. They don't always stay in those sports long term, too. But you you chose basketball and you stayed in basketball. What was it about the sport of basketball that kind of made you fall in love with it and, and keep coming back year in and year out and keep coming and giving your all for it? I think it was just the fact that it gave me a community to be a part of and I created bonds to the sport that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And then the fact that it kept me active was something to do. You talk about early years into getting into Hoban too. What was kind of your journey to ending up at Archbishop Hoban High School and becoming a Knight? I know, I know it's a, it's a long list. A lot of people want to be there too. What was your journey to becoming a, a Hoban Knight? Well, I originally started my ninth grade year at CVCA and it just wasn't the right fit for me and Hoban was more ideal for me. So I shadowed there and then I ended up transferring because I fell in love with the people there and the community and the basketball team. They instantly welcomed me in and it was just a great journey and I'm happy I took that step. Mackenzie Edinburgh, I just got done talking with her and she she speaks with Hoban with high regard. And I don't think there's been a single person I've talked to, whether past or present from uh, Hoban that have, uh, that have said anything bad about the school, it's people or anything. What what is it about about this this school about this community that is just so special and and welcoming for anyone? It feels like that that joins this program, joins these schools too. That uh, they're instantly feel feel like they're a family. It's just the community that they have created in the um, I'm trying to think of the word the relationships that they foster there and being able to just have everybody welcome you with open arms and just not feel judged and be welcome. It's a great experience. And you talk about that, that community, they come out for some basketball games, man. They come out for any sports. I mean, really, they, they, they show up and show out. What's it like though, when you, when you go into a girl's basketball game, no matter who the opponent is standing across from you, that, you know, you're going to have that castle filled up and, and the stands are going to be rocking. It feels amazing knowing we have that support behind us. You look at that support that you have too. What does that do? How how much does that drive you girls when you have those home games? You got one, maybe potentially two more for sure uh, coming up at home in the sectionals too. What's that home support really do for you? How much does it drive you? It just makes us feel like we have something to play for. We play for what's on our chest and we play for each other. I like your play style a lot, too, because you're a very, I'm going to do whatever the team needs me any given night. I mean, and you'll put up numbers in any given category. It doesn't always need to be scoring. It doesn't need to be rebounding. It doesn't need to be assists, but you could do any of that, too, as well as play some pretty stellar defense. What's that ment uh, mentality like to be going into any game saying, you know, I don't need to be the scorer, but if the opportunities are there, I'll take it, too. What kind of mentality do you need to have to be that kind of team player? You have to have the mentality of the strength of the pack is not the wolf, but the wolf is the strength of the pack. I think I said that the right way. But um, just being able to do whatever you need to do for your team at any given moment and not being selfish, you have to put the team first. 
looking at your specific skill set too and being able to develop yourself in, in a multitude of ways, when you got yourself in basketball, did you find yourself talented in, in these different categories? Did you have to work in it? How much work has gone into you being able to be the complete player that you are today in your senior year? I will say God has blessed me with a lot of natural given talent, such as my length. But other than that, I did have to work for a lot of things because it's been a journey, you know, so. What were, what was some of the, I guess, most challenging things that you've had to work on over the years, but you, maybe you've seen uh you've seen improvement now and it, it's all worth it. But what, what were some of the most challenging things you've had to work on? Definitely becoming a post player because I'm not very, um, thick. I am pretty tall and thin. So it was very hard to learn how to get the right positioning in there and learn how to create with with not a very wide like body type, if you understand what I'm trying to say. And so that was pretty hard. And then just learning the footwork and how to use my length correctly. I, I hear so many times too from so many high level high school, college level uh coaches too. Footwork is just everything too. It, it, it is the key to success in so many aspects in that sport. You look at yourself, too, and what you've been able to improve of yourself physically and as a, as a player, too. But coming into senior year, too, three seniors on the team, you're one of the leaders now. You're one of the girls that all the other younger girls are, are going to look up to. What do you have to learn about yourself as a leader, and what have you found out about your kind of leadership style going into the senior season? Well, I feel like I had to learn about myself that you can't make everyone happy if you're a leader. Sometimes you do have to be harsh on people and you will lose friends being a leader and that's okay. And my leadership style is more trying to guide people through things instead of like harping on them. But at the same time, you have to be stern so they can learn. From your freshman year to your senior year, what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself? Um, what's the biggest thing you've improved upon from then? I would say speaking up. My freshman year, I was very shy to talk and speak up. But now that I'm a senior and I am one of the leaders, speaking up is very important. I know so many young girls watch these Hoban teams, too. I, I was talking with Mac. I mean, our streaming numbers prove that. I mean, Hoban has a, a fan base that, that watches these games, too. But I know so many young athletes, too, look up and admire the girls that they see at the high school level. What's your advice to maybe a, a young girl that that sees a Devin Harris playing and, and says, I want to kind of be like Devin Harris when I grow up, or I want to play for for the Knights or a big time school like that? What's your advice to those little girls that, that want to see themselves in your shoes one day? My advice would be keep going. Don't let any obstacles stop you because it's going to be a hard road and a long journey to get where you want to be. But once you get there, it's a great, great place. You talk about a great place you guys are in right now, 16 and three. You're gearing up for another postseason run, too. I was asking Mac of this a little bit earlier. I want to ask you, too, being a senior and being on these playoff runs, too. I know you girls are accustomed to district championships. That's only a, a thing that you guys have been doing for some years over there at Hoban. But I always know that Hoban community, you guys strive for more. You strive for greatness. You strive for, for the top prize every time. For you girls to have that kind of that big tournament run, I feel like it's that second season, right? Everyone needs to lock in. How do you lock in for playoff games? Is it a, di a different mentality or is it business as usual for you? It's the same thing, business as usual, and we just got to keep going. When, when you talk about, though, with win or go home, does that ever sit in the back of your mind subconsciously? Or is that something you're not really thinking about during game time? I don't really think about it during game time, but in preparation, we all we have to be perfect because it is win or go home and we're not ready to go home yet. I know. I know Mac was talking about the keys to this team and her opinion was the defense, too. And I, I'm sure a lot of people would agree, too. We got to see your defense on full display against Wadsworth as a team. Talk to me about the defense, how you girls have been able to adjust. Obviously, there's been some injuries. You don't have everyone you started the season with, too. How have you girls been able to adjust and still maintain that strong defensive front? Our coaches are very, um, very credited in the preparation for learning how to switch our defenses, losing players to injuries. But being able to trust our coaches and trust each other in our rotations and knowing that if one person has to guard head up, we all have to help also off the ball because defense is a team effort. Pretty great set of coaches too to to trust too. I mean, I, I was saying as well, like the the she Pam Davis knows more about basketball than I think I could ever learn to in girls basketball too. She's she's an endless well of knowledge. When you talk about having such great coaches like that too, what are some of the biggest things you've learned from from your coaches too, and how have they helped you out in your progression as a basketball player? 
coaches and they're amazing people and just learning and being able to be listening to them and just get the experience of being coached by them. They've helped me grow as more than just a basketball player, but as a person also. Take us inside some of those uh, those practices too. I don't, obviously, I don't want you giving away the the book on a Coach Pam Davis practice, right? But what are some, I guess, uh, some Pam Davis quotes too? What's her What's her favorite go to sayings that uh, that she says all the time? Hmm. She has quite a few. I'm trying to think. What would be a good one? I don't know, Coach Pam. She's great. She says a lot, <laughs> but she doesn't say a lot at the same time. So I'm not really sure what a great saying of hers would be. She, she's one of those too. When she talks, you listen absolutely too. And I know she's probably got plenty of those those Pamisms. I guess you could you could call them too during uh, during practices as well. When you talk about the practices though with the girls too, and I know oftentimes Coach Davis talks about if practice is harder than than the game, then the game's going to be easier than than we expect, right? When you talk about these tough practices that you girls are able to go through, how well does this condition you for games too? And how tough, run me through a Hoban Knights practice too. How tough is one of your practices? Oh, our practices, they're they are pretty tough. They're not easy. So our practices definitely help us prepare for the game. The amount of everything that we do, when we see it in a game, we realize like we're not tired or we can finish this play or we can keep going. Devin, I also want to give you the opportunity to give a, a shout out, give some love and support to those who have been there to support you since day one, whether they're in the stands, they're at home watching on YSN this season or wherever they may be. Who's those, who are those that have been there supporting you since day one in this basketball journey? My whole family. They, they've they never given up on me anytime, even though I wanted to not keep playing. They were like, you got it. You can do it. So my whole family, I'm just so thankful for them to mentally help me keep pushing through everything. You talk about the the family. I mean, it's always those unbreakable bonds. So I, I see the fam that are always up there. Some in the balcony. There's some on the floor too. They're always there supporting you too. And you got a great family and a great support system around you as well, Devin. Before we let you go, I also want to kind of give you that opportunity to kind of just let the Hoban community, let Hoban as a high school, let Hoban know what uh, the school, the program, the coaches, everyone has meant to you too, and kind of give. Uh, not, it's not your farewell, no, but kind of give uh, what this the Hoban Knights and this this community has meant to you personally. To me, this community has meant everything. Once again, I did come in as a transfer, and I feel like I've been there all four years. There's never been any sort of disconnect in that, and I'm extremely thankful for it, and it will be forever be my home. Well, uh, forever your home at the castle, too. You guys got a couple more games set there, too, as the Knights are gearing up for another big-time tournament run. One of their seniors, Devin Harris, joins me in another edition of Player Profile this season.